pure insanity at the Euros today. Celebrations, heartbreak, last second goals, a, a penalty shootout at the very end of one of these games. It just an incredible, incredible display. And I'm going to bring in uh, my buddy Tom Franklin from Toasted STL because he is a soccer fan like myself. And, and I want to talk to you a little bit about both of these games because you had Croatia and Spain as the kickoff today. And after Croatia eliminates a two-goal deficit in the final seven minutes to send it to extra time, you're thinking, wow, epic game. Spain then comes out, scores two goals in, in about a three-minute span to take the lead. And then they end up winning that game, just an intense game overall. And, and you're thinking, man, that's a hell of a game. And then all of a sudden, France and Switzerland come out and go, yeah, you know what? Hold my beer. For, first, I want to get your take on that Spain-Croatia game. And then we have to talk about France-Switzerland. Well, sure. And first things first, you know, it wouldn't be a St. Louis-based sports podcast without us prioritizing soccer first. You know, this is this is total St. Louis right here. Uh, shout out to all the soccer moms that are watching and listening right now. Um, Euro 2020. So um, Spain came into the Euros with a big problem. They were fancy. They had all this talent. They could uh, make beautiful passes, and they can play some beautiful football. There was one problem they had, and it was rearing its head You know, in the opening uh, uh, divisions. They couldn't finish. No. They could not score a goal to save their lives. And today against Croatia, when they needed to, I guess they needed to get their backs against the corner, they put up five. On a, on a very game Croatia team, a, a Croatian team that has won some uh, hardware in, in, in recent years. So a uh, big comeback by, by Spain. And you're right. I kind of came into this expecting, OK, we're going to we're going to talk about uh, uh, Spain and Croatia. Then, oh, yeah, France and Switzerland later on. Uh, no big deal. Uh, by the way, uh, getting back to that Spain, Croatia. And this is how crazy it is in case you haven't didn't watch today and a lot of you work, so you probably haven't had a chance to watch. If you have it on your DVR, you might want to step away for you know a couple minutes here. Five, four, although we did spoil the, the final score. We pulled <laughs> the one. So forget it. You're spoiled already. Yeah, Spain had a 3-1 lead. 85th minute, uh, Mislav Orsic uh, scores to make it 3-2 to two Croatia. And you're thinking, well, okay, well, that's a... You know, kind of a nice, uh, you know, self-esteem goal, I guess, if you will, you know, just to get on the board and, you know, show your uh, countrymen that you're, you're, you're fight hanging in there. No, they tied up with an extra time, two minutes of extra time. Mario Pasalic, I'm going to go with that. I apologize to the Pasalic family if I just butchered your name. Ties it up at three. We're going to extras. And you're right. You're kind of thinking, hey, this might this might go to penalties. And the second game did today. Uh, first game, though, Alvaro Morata at one hundred at minute 100 and Michael Olasabal at uh, 103 decide, you know what? We're not playing around anymore. Spain had the possession advantage at 68 percent. They had 10 shots on target compared to Croatia's seven. And they had 23 shots in total compared to Croatia's 12. So in that extra period, Spain felt like, OK, they needed to set the record straight. They're one of the best teams in world football. And uh, they set the record straight, I think, uh, with a uh, five to three win here. But you you mentioned it, that France-Switzerland game. I did not expect Switzerland to put up any resistance. I mean, you know, we all know Switzerland isn't exactly a team that's known for putting up a resistance at wartime. So, you know, <laughs> you know, in, in soccer, I mean, they're, they're a pretty decent team. I mean, I, I don't want to dog them too much, but this is France we are talking about here. France is one of the the powers in, in, in football. They have so many stars on their roster. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Pogba, Kylian Mbappe, who... Uh, uh, because we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one <laughs> go today. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one here. Um, this was a heck of a game in of itself. I mean, Switzerland, uh, comes up with a, uh, one nil lead early on, uh, Harris, Safrovic, uh, Safrovic, uh, with the first goal, Kareem Benzema then gets two in a matter of three minutes, the 57th minute and 59th minute. And then Paul Pogba, as I mentioned, you know, one of the uh, world superstars, uh, 75th minute, three to one France. And you're thinking, you know, kind of like maybe uh, uh, we were just talking about a three-one lead. You know, maybe they're uh, maybe that's safe. Maybe that's going to be okay. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh, Switzerland comes back. Uh, Seferovic comes back with the, uh, his second goal of the game at the eighty-first minute, and then uh, Mario 
Gavin Radovic uh, scores in the 90th minute. I am, I'm, you know, I really need to brush up on my European names. This is, you know, I'm, I'm a public address announcer who is supposed to know these names beforehand. I'm doing a lousy job, but you know, great game, tied three to three, going into extra time, and unlike the Spain uh, Croatia game, this one's going to penalties and wags, uh, killing Mbappe, one of the world's top top superstars, probably the you know ronaldo messi level superstar of like the you know next generation after them uh gets a chance to uh, save his team in the penalties and the swiss goalkeeper says nope no and both teams had gone back and forth it was you know goal 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 no one really missed everybody took really really good penalty attempts in that it was 4-4 and you had uh asmer mehmedi putting the pressure on Mbappe with the, the fifth goal. And he steps up. And, and as a star player, you want to be in that moment. You want to be the guy that puts your team on his back and continues to send him through. And he had a chance to do that today. And, you know, they were talking about it right before he took his shot. And he actually recently just m- missed another penalty kick with an opportunity to give his team a lead. And it was kind of the same exact incident here, except, you know, that goal was the, the, the shot was on target. And just Jan Sommer made a great, Great read and a great save. And, you know, you go back to the game itself, and Swiss was up one nothing at the half. You're like, okay, France not really playing up to their potential right now. And just after the second half began, Swiss the Swiss had an opportunity to go up 2 to nothing. A penalty in the box gave them a penalty kick. And Hugo Lloris came up with an absolute banger of a save. And that, in turn, as we say so many times, a great save on one end leads to some success on the other. That's when Kareem Benzema got the first of his two goals almost immediately after that. And that's saying something for a guy that hasn't been with the club for five and a half years. Okay, He hasn't been a part of France's team for a while. And yet he comes in and Benzema is able to knock in not just one, but two goals in in about a two-minute span. And you think, here comes France. Here they come. They are back. They are ready to go. They are just going to roll. And then Pogba gets the goal in the 75th minute, and you're just like, there you go. France is back. They're going to win it. They're the defending champs. They're here. But then just the the sheer dedication of the Swiss. And you talk about them scoring in, in, in the 90th minute. They'd actually scored not even a minute before that, but it was ruled offside. So if you, if you saw, there's pictures out there of a, of a Swiss fan. And in a, in a minute span, he's got his shirt on. He's looking dejected after that offside. And then a minute later, his shirt's off, yelling, going absolutely crazy. <laughs> and if that doesn't tell you what European soccer is all about, and Tom, you said it earlier uh, in our group chat, chat about, you know, the Euros where, where chubby, uh, hairy men can, <laughs> can rip off their shirts and, and be excited. Uh, that that's only in the Euros, and that's what we saw today. And, and I tell you what, you got to feel for Mbappe. It's a moment that he's gonna have to live up to and live down for a long, long time. But it just goes to show you how just wide open the Euros are. My interest is tomorrow. It's the Germany and England game. I'm a big Germany fan, and I'm scared. I'll be perfectly honest. Germany is another one of those teams that's been up at the top for a very long time. They did not look good in the group stage. Almost got knocked out by Hungary, and they're going up against an England team that's young and hungry. So that one could be a very, very intriguing game uh, in the 2 o'clock time frame. Well, here is something that might make you breathe a little bit easier. Well, actually, two things. Number one, England has a track record of choking, you know, when when when, when the, the moment gets tough. I follow a couple of soccer YouTubers from England, and you, 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 you never hear the end of it whenever they get bounced from the, either the World Cup or the Euros. Um, it is not pretty, but uh, this will actually be the 13th meeting between England and Germany at Wembley Stadium. And, you know, you would think that, you know, Wembley Stadium, England's got home field advantage. It's in London, you know, the heartbeat of, uh, of England. But funny thing here. Uh, England is actually winless in their last seven against the Germans in Wembley. They've drawn twice and lost five times. So the, the track record isn't great. Um, in, the, in, in all major tournaments in the Euro and World Cup, this will actually be the seventh meeting uh, in major competition between England and Germany. And uh, both sides have won two games each with three draws. 
though the Germans have progressed via a penalty shootout following two of those draws. So history is showing that this, this should be a fun, entertaining matchup. It'll be a very close matchup. And I will say this for, for, for England, you know, I'll, you know, again, a lot's been made about their past history in these tournaments. Um, they had a tough road to get to this point. They were in a, you know, pretty gnarly group, you know, in, in, in the opening round. And here they are, you know, here they are. And, um, you know, I, I feel that England's going to come into this one with something to prove, something to prove that this is not the last generation of choke artists and the generation before that that choked. This is a new England. And um, we'll see if they can get the job done against Germany, who, of course, as you know, Wags will always bring it. Oh, yeah. No question about it. And e even if they're struggling, they will find a way to at least put the pressure on you and, and fight to the bitter, bitter end. Hey, it's you, man, here from Casey. For all your sports news, catch the Toasted Tavern with Scott Tobin and the man called Wags weeknights at 9 p.m. You can follow Toasted Tavern on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Let's get toasted.